May Flom here, and today I'm excited to be bringing the Cheshire Cat and a funky mixed media canvas project to you featuring the scan and cut. For a project like this, you're going to want an assortment of materials. I'm working with both sticker or adhesive vinyl. I'm also working with a bunch of different pattern papers, and I have an eight by 10 canvas, although a shadow box or a canvas board or even a photo frame would work for this project. So here I have my SDX 230D, also known as the Disney Scan and Cut, and I'm going to start by selecting a basic shape. I'm gonna go all the way back to the very end here and select out a favorite shape that I think will make a really nice repeated pattern. So you can use any shape that you would like. What you're looking for here is a shape that is going to work well for your vision, for your pattern, for your design, whatever it is that you're trying to create with this piece of home decor. For me, it's this little kind of a star shape and I am going to size it down. I'm also going to use the little up, down, side to side arrow button. What this does is allow me to adjust only the height or only the width. So this allows me to alter the dimensions of the item. And I know that I'm working with eight, by 10 so I know that two and a half inches high should get me four up and down I'm selecting one and then I'm going in and I'm adding more and what I'm going to try to do here is just quickly look at do I like what this looks like eight by ten this just kind of gives me a visual and I'm going yes I think I like this yes I think this is going to work so I'm gonna add a bunch more and just kind of visualize out is this how I want this to look is this going to look how I think it should look is this going to look the, in a way that in a design that is going to work well for me. If the answer is yes, we're going to cu start cutting our materials. If the answer is maybe, I will do a sample of materials, usually an inexpensive or maybe a cardstock that I don't have too much of or don't like as much, do a couple tests. In this case, I absolutely love it. It is doing what I was hoping it would do. I want to cut. But what I'm going to do is move two to three into each corner because I'm going to cut this out of a lot of different materials, but I want to cut more than one material at a time. Now, pro tip, of course, you're going to want to make sure that your materials that you are cutting are a similar thickness when you're cutting so that they cut well and the auto blade is able to properly do its job. Here you can see I've got four different papers and I'm just peeling off my little shapes here and I'm going to keep repeating this. Now this cat paper you might notice, um, it's very specific where I might want that to cut. So now I'm gonna show you the scan function so you can see how we could scan our material in if there is a very specific area that you want to have cut out. Otherwise, you're just putting your material down and mine are approximately five inch squares of material so that I know everything fits and so I know without really looking everything's going to cut really nicely and we can continue as you see my mat is loading it's going to always take us right back here we can just keep cutting that out or if there are changes or like right there I just push the scan mat function if I want to scan things if I want to change things I can do so and then cut again if there's any alterations to be made. And I absolutely love this about this machine because it really makes it easy for me to do a project like this and to cut out a whole bunch of different things, a whole bunch of different patterns and designs quickly and easily. So I'm moving those around so that they'll be on the little kitty cat faces. And once I'm happy with it, I can move any of the others around if there's any of the others that I feel like I wish this was a little different. And then we're going to cut and we're just going to com complete this cut and then continue to put more materials down and recut or cut more materials until I have more than enough of these shapes cut out so that I can then assemble. Now we're gonna go in and get our Cheshire Cat and this I'm going to be cutting out of craft vinyl or sticker vinyl. And the reason is I'm going to be putting this on top and I want it out of vinyl because I want it to be a sticker. I think it would set really well that is not necessary though. If you wanted to make this out of fabric, paper, felt, anything at all that the scan and cut will cut, you totally can. I know I want this to be about four and a half inches wide. From looking at my canvas and thinking about how big or small I want this to be, how much of my canvas do I want this to cover up? And then I'm gonna go in, scan my material so that I make sure that I'm moving this onto an area where my vinyl is rather than trying to cut out of nothing, right? We wouldn't want to do that. And then I'm going to go into cut and I'm going to select the little toolbar button to make sure that I am selecting half cut. 
This will allow me to cut the sticker, not the carrier sheet. And this is important. It will make it a lot easier for us to apply this to our project. Once this is all cut out, you're going to need to weed it. In other words, remove the parts of the vinyl that you don't want. And here we can see we've got everything coming together. I'm just taping onto a piece of cardstock my shape. So I'm not actually working directly onto my canvas yet, and you'll see why in a moment. Right now I'm just taping the shapes onto the paper, and I'm not worrying about if the points line up perfectly, and you'll see why by the time we finish. It's all going to work out in the end, I promise. But once I have all my pieces down, then I'm going to want to think about my Cheshire Cat, make sure it's the right size, think about how that's going to get placed, and go ahead and weed, as I mentioned before, or in other words, remove the sticker vinyl that we do not want to apply. We're going to remove that so that we can more easily transfer our design onto our project. With this done, I am going to head over to the sewing machine portion. I'm using pink thread, purple thread, and black thread being really super over the top here, of course. So very simple, I just have a straight stitch. I think I have it on four millimeters stitch, just not too tiny is the only thing. And then I'm just gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna go across, around the edge, wherever and however I want to make kind of a faux quilt look. And then once I'm done, and we are not worrying about the threads, the ends at all, and I'll show you why very soon. But then once it's all sewn up, I'm going to come in here and fill all of those gaps with, you guessed it, another row of those shapes. So this is why we wanted more than enough. It's going to allow us to pick all the different colors. It's going to allow us to switch up where the colors are, make sure there's not too many purples or too many pinks or whatever next to each other. And just again, we're going to use an adhesive and tape these all down into place. Then we're going to be ready for our transfer of our Cheshire Cat. We wanna do all of the paper or base layers and all of the stitching first, because by doing all of that first, it's going to make it so that this is going to stay on top of our project. You always wanna remember whatever you wanna be on the very top of a project, you actually usually wanna put down last. And I'm just using a piece of transfer material here. This is just going to make this design transfer seamlessly, beautifully easily. Place it down. Again, I'm using the stylus to kind of rub. It will help, especially here, where we have a very textured paper. We have a lot of depth, a lot of texture. So that's gonna help me make sure that it transfers really nicely, no bubbles, uh, no lumps, no problems. And I'm just taking my time there, going in there and rubbing all around and then just lifting that transfer material off. And that transfer material absolutely can be reused. In fact, we are going to reuse it because as I suspected, I don't love how it looks seeing through the gaps in that design. So I'm actually, my machine is still on. I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to cut out my Cheshire Cat. I'm going to load my mat with some white craft vinyl and just load it on up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. And the reason is I want to fill in those gaps in the design. And I had thought about this and if I wanted to leave it alone or not. So I waited until I could see at this point in the project, yes, we absolutely want to fill that in. No, we do not want to leave that empty. And so I'm going to go ahead and go in here and I've got my white vinyl and I'm going to select cut and we're already on half cut so we can just go ahead and go for it cut this out real quick and then weed it. But this time when we weed it, what we're going to be removing is removing everything except those little bits that we weeded out last time. So that's right, the cat is now going to go and the little bits are going to stay. And because we cut it out the exact same size, we left everything alone there on the skin and cut, and cut it out the same size, we're going to just be able to transfer this right onto our design and all the little pieces are going to be in the right area. Now, if you are concerned or if you're worried you can't get it all just right, you can transfer one part at a time. You could even transfer one piece at a time by simply picking up one piece at a time with the transfer material. I'm working in kind of two halves. I'm gonna do the tail separately just to make sure that I get it just right. 
And this takes care of my problem. Now it's solid white in the tail. We could have done any color at all. I just went with white because I didn't want too much color here. Now our next step is going to be to seal this. Remember I said don't worry about the threads. This is the why. I'm taking a liquid adhesive that's also a sealant and I'm taking a wet paintbrush so that it stays nice and loose and I am coating this entire project with it. Now, the front of it. Now, what this is going to do, all the threads, it's gonna help lock all of our threads in here on our paper craft. It's going to have, help seal all of those little shapes so that we don't have edges flying or anything. Since this is going to be a canvas and not a shadow box or inside a picture frame, it's going to be out and exposed to the elements. So I really wanna make sure that that's taken care of. I also now I'm gonna place spots of adhesive as well as buttons, sequins, little pearls, that kind of stuff, just to accent the little spots. And this is why I said, do not worry if your points are not absolutely perfect because when we come in here and add all these fun little buttons and sequins and things, well, guess what? They get covered up, so it'll be okay in the end. Always remember when you're crafting, if there are projects you are making, sometimes it's absolutely okay to let something go because it's not gonna be seen in the end. Now, with all of this done, I have put two-sided tape straw all over that back. And we're going to place this down. Now, I also did trim. I'm also adding a little liquid adhesive just as support. And I also did trim away any loose threads. So what this did was just basically glue all the thread, all the ends of the threads into place so that nothing can unravel. Everything is protected. And now we place this on. And I'm adding a little glitter glue, too, just to have some extra fun. But we place this onto our canvas, we let it dry, and guess what? We're good to go. And we have all of this fun, all of these things that you could create, all of the themes you could create. You could add words if you wanted, or phrases, quotes. You could make it big, you could make it small. A lot of options here, but I hope I have inspired you to get your scan and cut out, check out those built-in files, and get creating. I've had a lot of fun sharing with you today. Please be sure to check out the Brother blog, as well as the YouTube channel for more creativity inspiration and ideas on how you can get the most out of your scan and cut.